somebody that you you know you go and tell your mom that I will get this for you, but you don't get, then you get all excuses as to why you didn't get it. Integrity is about doing it, and once you tell it, doing it no matter what, no is no but. Tell the people, kick the butt out. Kick the butt out. Right? No is, no but. Irrespective of what, because you told, you will do it. If there are situations, you will go and tell it in advance. Not post factor. You, you have told somebody that you will call up at 5 o'clock. You don't call up. At 7 o'clock, you will tell why you didn't call up at 5 o'clock. Not that. At 4.30, you have to tell that you are not able to call up at 5 o'clock. That is integrity. Right? You tell and do, you tell and do, you tell and do, you tell and do, you tell and do. Finally, things happen because you told, not because you did. You are such a person who will be a magician. You are a person who tells and does. I tell and I do, and I tell and I do. I say, when you do that, when you said it, it happens. Not because you said it. Not because you did it. Because you said it. You to become a magician, you have to get this. Believe me, sometimes people come and tell me, oh, you tell it happens. Because you have to cultivate this. You have to cultivate this every day, day in and day out and day in and day out. You tell something. Imagine you tell something and it will happen. Don't you want what it? Don't you want what it? It can happen that magic is in your hand. Provided you tell, you come for the class, you came for the class to listen and not have a private conversation. That is integrity. Anybody who is not doing that is breaking that integrity. Let me tell you that. Right? Because you can go out and have a conversation, right? Why are you sitting inside and having the conversation? You can go out and have a conversation. Right? You don't have to sit inside and have a conversation. Because that is your integrity. Because as a man here, I'm going to be able to listen and see what you are going to give you, right? That is integrity. I want to share an interesting story. I had a, a Nepalese uh, security guard in my apartment. His name is Deepak. And he used to work in my house also because I wanted him to have some extra money by working in my house. So he used to do housekeeping in my house as well. And he had his wife staying with him. And his wife was pregnant and she delivered a kid. And his wife used to go and do this cooked work in some of the houses. And because she was pregnant and she delivered a baby, she couldn't go and do that work. So what happened was her earnings stopped. So when that happened, when I when I saw that his wife is not able to work, you know, every month I you know when I know that his wife delivered, I gave his salary and then I gave an extra amount telling. You give it to your wife because she has to eat good food because she was nursing the child. So she has to eat good food. So give this money to your wife. So I used to give his salary and an extra amount to his wife. So this went on for some four months. The fifth month I told Deepak, "Apka salary and ye apka bache ke wife ke." And that month he told, "Ma'am, you don't give now. My wife has started working." I go to office in the morning, I come back in the evening. I do not know whether his wife is going to back work or not. He is earning such a small salary. But look at the integrity of this guy. He could have easily told that his wife is not working and taken that money from me. No, I won't give a come. I won't know. But look at the integrity of this guy. He did take the money from me. But because I have already taken the money from my pocket and I told him, this month you keep it, next month onwards I will not give. Right? So, integrity is not that only rich people have or poor people. This guy was a security guard in my apartment. And he had such a high integrity that he didn't want to take the money which did not belong to him because I was giving the money because his wife was not working. His wife started working and he didn't want to take that money. Right? I also had another security guard. You see, you see this instance. And he said, no, there was HDFC bank, bank people knocking on my door. I told, what happened? And he was taking the picture and all that. I told, what happened? No, you, are, there is, you have a brother by name Narayan Kurwil. I told, no. I told, this person has taken a loan and he has told that you are his sister. 
and he has given this address. James address, telling this is my sister's address. He has taken the money and vanished. Right? And the bank is after me now. I'll deal with that. The bank is after me. So, there are examples of both. Right? But integrity is something that's so powerful. In every day of your life, you have an opportunity to show what your integrity is. With your friends, with your, you know, everybody that you, even you go out and you will talk to somebody, there is to be integrity in that. Right? Okay? The next one is treat everyone. Right? I have this, you know, when I write, when I have this uh, uh, assurance to people that anytime you write to me, within 24 hours you will see a response. Right? Anytime you write to me, 24 hours you will see a response. I will do this irrespective of the level of the person. It's not that if the person is at a very senior level, I will respond. If the person is at a junior level, how many of the people do that? Right? The person at senior, senior level will respond in a different way. What they respond might be different because at senior level, I might have to pitch it at the right level. For a junior person, I might have to tell it in a different way. What I write might differ from whom I am writing to. But my responsiveness in terms of my time will never change. Just because somebody is junior, I will not treat them differently. Right? So treating everybody equal, irrespective of what level they are, what color of the skin, where they are from, who they are, what their economic condition is, irrespective of all of, all of that, we have to treat people equally. How many of you know the name of the security guard in the front? How many of you know? Nobody. Why? That person is taking care of your security. Have you gone and tried to come and everything is okay? Thank you. Try to find the name. Imagine if you can address him with his name. How powerful it will be. Huh? Okay. You have your own name for it. Okay. Baya. Okay. So you all call him Baya. Everybody is a buyer. How will you treat them? Because you have to know the name. By not even knowing the name of a person who is doing so many things for you. How many of you know the name of the gardener? Is there a garden here? There! No, no garden. No trees? No trees you won't sit and chat? What you are missing? Okay. So, Imagine, imagine thinking, so once I went, okay, once I went to an office. I went to an office. And I went to the restroom. When I went to the restroom, I asked this hey guy, I get disturbed. Can you please, if there is any conversation you can have. Especially for this, right? This is the, this is the conversation. So then, when I went to the restroom, I saw this lady and I said, Kanada, Uta Aita. She was so shocked because I go in this gorgeous uh, Kanchidram sarees and I look like somebody who is senior and all, right? She was so scared. Why is this person asking me whether I had my food? This is danger, right? I was very concerned. That means nobody who is working at the office talks to her. She is, it is so alien to her to be asked whether you had your food by somebody at senior level. I realized that the culture of the organization is not good. I would never want to be part of the organization. Because in my office, when I go, and they are very casual, they will ask me, Madam Muta Madhidira, Madam Sindhi Madhidira, because they are used to that conversation. You see, people are treated equally. They don't have to shy away from talking to somebody senior. A normal human conversation can happen, irrespective of your level. So treating everybody equally is very important. Especially in the current scenario, you will be measured on that. Whether you are treating people equally or not. Some of the time, you will see if you are in a senior role, because if you are MBA, you go and join in a senior role, and you are from, say, Telugu, uh, Andhra, and all the people you are hiring are from Andhra. <laughs> right? They think 
that you prefer people from a particular location and you do not hire. Be always have in mind not only what you do, how people are going to be looking at you. It's not that it matters, but it matters in terms of your integrity and your inclusiveness. Because any time people can suspect it, don't do it. Any time people might suspect your integrity or your inclusiveness, don't do it. Be watchful. Okay? Treat others the way in which you, they, you want them to treat you, right? Treat everyone as equal. Treat everyone as equal. So, in during Deepavali, we used to distribute Okay? And uh, I used to call all these housekeeping staff, like all the way in which you are sitting, no? we used to make them sit. Then we'll have a short chat and then we'll give seats. I used to tell them, when I don't come one of the days, nothing will happen. In fact, things might go better. <laughs> when one of the days I don't come, things might be okay. My team, I have set up my team very well and they will do it. But one of the days, one of the person doesn't come in their team, right? The bathroom will stink. So I ask them, so who is important? So it is nothing about your level. So don't think that somebody is important because they are doing a big growth and somebody is not important because they are doing a small growth. What that person, what your security guard does, tomorrow if he allows some bad elements to enter, all of our life is at risk. Do you think that that is not important? So treat people equally, irrespective of what they do, irrespective of how they look, irrespective of their economic level, irrespective of their career level. Okay. You are not committing to it? I can bank on you for that? Thank you. Now let's go to the next list. Take accountability. See, take accountability is easy when I am responsible for it, right? Otherwise, what do we tell? This is not my problem, this is somebody else's problem. How many of us try to escape when we are caught? Always, right? Very natural. I'm so happy that you are telling the truth. Your integrity is intact. Very natural. Because we want to find, yeah, yeah, I want to do it, but this person did it. That person didn't do help me. So it's all about others. But taking accountability is no matter what I do, I'll get it done. You know how closely it is tied with integrity as well? The buck stops here. When you have a person in the organization, just listen to this. When you have a person in the organization who acts like this, no matter what happens, when something happens, the buck stops here. Imagine the accountability that will be there in the organization. And if everybody is like that, imagine the capability of the organization. Imagine what will happen to the organization, right? No matter what, I have told I will get it done, I will get it done. Something wrong has happened, I will go and fix it. Irrespective of who did it. So accountability, next step is, irrespective of who did it, I will not watch from the side and have fun. I will make sure that I will help him fixing it. Accountability is that. So every organization wants accountability at that kind of level, so that it can try. And even you as an individual, you will do extraordinarily well. Believe me, when you take accountability, when you take accountability to that level, that the buck stops here, you will be the most valuable person in the organization. The organization will celebrate you. You want to be celebrated or not? Yes, you want to be celebrated. You want to be the most valuable person in the organization. Accountability is the key. That you take something, you will do it no matter what. You will get it done no matter what. No if, no but. Right? So accountability also means responsibility, right? Because you are responsible, that is why you are taking the accountability. I tell you my own life story. Okay. When I was 17, I was done with my plus two. And um, my sister was the only earning member in the family, right? And we are seven of us. My father had sold off the hotel. We were running Udupi people. Wherever we go, we established hotel. So my father had sold off the hotel because of something. 
and uh, the hotel was sold off. My sister, elder sister was the uh, only one who was earning. My two of my sisters were married off. The third sister was the only one who was earning. And uh, none of us were earning. So when I did my plus two, and the marks were very good, she went and told in her office. The office people told, yeah, ask her to come. We will have a very good job for her. Right? So she comes and tells me that you come tomorrow and PNT. She was working in Post and Telegraph, government office. Right? Post and Telegraph, you come and join. Your, my office people have told you that they will give you a job. I am only 70. I tell my mom, I will not work. I want to study. At 70. I do not know what power came to me. Okay? At 17, I tell my mom, I will not work, I will study. I tell her, just give me food, rest of it I take it. I do not know how I will take it. But look at this, I do not know what happened to me. Now if somebody asks me, how could you tell that? I do not know. But I was very sure, I want to study. I tell her, at 17, I tell her, just give me food, rest of it I take it. I didn't know how I will take it. But look at this dialogue, right? So, uh, ability to go and tell that. And then I followed it, right? I used to go and give tuition. I used to walk along. My mom used to walk along with me. But my mom trusted me. And she told, okay, study. We'll see, right? During my college, during my engineering, I used to, I'm talking about 82, 86, right? I used to earn 1,000 rupees a month. My first salary was 1,000 rupees. My first salary as a lecturer in an engineering college in Coimbatore was 1,000 rupees. And I used to uh, earn 1,000 rupees as a student. I used to teach mathematics to kids. And there used to be six kids coming home. I've never done any partying or anything like that when I was in school days. I've never watched movies because I have to spend money, no? I've never done that. So, that ability to go and tell what you want and take that risk, right? Then I, I obviously, you know, one, one, what happened was uh, we used to live in this compound houses. I do not know how many of you know. There will be a huge space and there will be too many houses there. Right? Compound house. So my neighbor was from northern part of the country and he was running a business. So one day he was telling, he was having a terrible headache. And I told him, what happened, Anna? He told him, no, my, my account book is not tallying. So he was, he's a business guy and his account book is not tallying. It's a big deal for him. So I took it from him, I was good in mathematics, I fixed it in uh, half an hour and I gave it back to him telling him this is gold. So he asked me, okay, you are able to do this in half an hour, can you be my accountant? So I used to do part-time accountancy job, earn 500 rupees, I used to come back from school, college, I used to do this tuition, I used to do the accountancy work for him and I used to earn money, right? So that happened and then I had to look for work in 82, 86. Jobs are not easily available, right? Only public sector jobs, right? Now, like, no entitlement, like, why campus recruitment is not happening, yeah? College is not Campus recruitment is not happening, right? We could not tell that because the number of jobs were very less and it was only public sector jobs. So, and I was not, I was not getting a job, but getting a job was very critical for me because I studied so that I can support myself and my family and I had to earn. There is no Sitting at home was not an option for me. So I walk into this engineering college and ask for a job and I get hired because I'm very good in teaching. Right? I get hired as a lecturer. Then uh, I'm one of the professors who get, I get, got hired as a lecturer in Tamil Nadu College of Engineering, Karnataka, but I do not know how many of you know Kambatu. I got, you know, so I got hired as a lecturer in Tamil Nadu College of uh, Engineering, Karnataka. And then one of the professors from Kaipatur Institute of Technology visited our campus as an external examiner. Because in your lab classes, there will be an external examiner who will come and evaluate you whether, you know, I cannot just as an internal examiner accept a mark. And then the external examiner has to validate so that you have done it right. So that exam, he came as an external examiner. So when he came as an exam, external examiner, he saw me. Without me applying for the job, he took me to CIT. CIT is a much bigger college, right? It is UGC recognized, I got a UGC pay in that college when Karnatapati I was earning only 1000 rupees a month. So this is a UGC pay, class from gazetted officer, right? It's a professional engineering college, it was recognized by the government, government was funding it. So I got a UGC pay scale of 2200 a month with all VA and all that stuff and it was well recognized. And the principal promised me, Arundhati, I just love your work, so I am going to sponsor you for PhD and all, just pick up. And that this happened, right? 
I get selected for defense R&D and uh, to be a, you know, to get posted as a scientist. But I have to do one year course in Pune. One year course in Pune in the fellowship course. And if I get selected, then I will get the job as a scientist. So, this is a permanent job. Staying at home at, with my mother, everything is safe. And to take up an opportunity, which is away from Hong Kong, nobody has travelled outside, especially a woman, right? Going to Pune, staying there for a year, that was a thousand rupees stipend. So the salary comes down, thousand rupees stipend. At the end of the year, you might get selected or not. You don't know. You're not sure. So I leave this, and when, when I asked my mother, she tells me, she was a fifth standard uh, educated person. She told, I am not educated, but I support whatever your decision is. Imagine what my mother was, right? She told, I cannot decide for you because I am not educated, but whatever you decide, I will support you. So I choose to go to Pune, leaving a permanent job, which was giving me much better salary, staying at home and being with my mom. I leave that and going to this unknown place where it's very different and the salary is not much, only 1000 rupees stipend. At the end of the year, I will know whether I got a job or not. And I took that risk. And I took that risk, right? And then I joined the Defense R&D as a scientist. I worked there for nine years. And then another thing I did. That job is a government job. Class one gets as an officer. Lifetime of pension. Lifetime of medical benefits. And I get this H V job in a corporate. I did that and joined H V. Okay? The job security is not there. If you are not good at your work, they can throw you out at any time. Right? And I leave all of that. There is no lifetime pension. There is no lifetime health benefits. I have to really work hard and save the money for me to be able to do all of that. I quit a permanent government job in different currency and join H. Right? So, but today I am here wherever I am is because of all the risk I took. Yes or no? Going and asking my mother, telling I will not work and I will study, right? And then feeling that lecturer job which was in my hometown, going and joining different R&D where the job was not known whether I get it or not. Taking that risk and leaving different R&D and going and joining H E, right? Every day I have taken risk for us for me to be able to be wherever I am. Without risk. It is impossible to thrive, right? Take risk. One thing I ask people ask me, how did you take the risk, yeah? So maximum kya hoga? I will not die in life. Anything that I can do without, without, without protecting my life, I should be able to manage. If I if I go off, then what is the protect? <laughs> right? So anything that is not going to take your life away. You can manage. So somebody is asking me, what you would have done? So I just answered myself. I can drive a car, no? I'll be the first driver in Bangalore who is a woman driver who takes people around and who will tell stories. And people will be waiting to get my car. Look at me. <laughs> right? I don't know. I can teach. I can I am very good at mathematics. I will run a tuition center. I didn't know what would happen. But I was sure I want to do this, right? Taking risk in life is important. Do not get bogged down by, oh, what will happen? What will happen? What maximum can happen? You, anytime you are in doubt, you ask, maximum can happen? I do my job. I do my job. Right? So don't ever be constrained by not taking risk. That is natural. And if you adapt to change, you will flourish. Right? If you don't adapt to change, you are going to have problems. So, it is not the strongest of the species that survive. It is the most adaptive which one will survive. Right? So you have to adapt. Being strong doesn't matter. But how flexible you are matters. How quickly you can change. 
matters. How quickly you can think and adapt yourself to the surrounding. That makes you successful, right? Be flexible and adaptive to change. We talk so much about change um, that, you know, just half an hour back. So I'm going to skip this. So you all agree that we have to be adaptive to change? And imagine how I change from a government job, a teacher's job to a government job, government job to a corporate life. Corporate life to back to a teaching life. I do the corporate life again. I have not left my job. But doing this, right? And that is why I am getting excited, I am getting energized. Right? If I was not doing all of that, it would be a very boring life for me. Attitude is everything. Okay? So, how to? Yo, that you have to be, that is why you have to be aware. You have to be aware. So many, I, I, I totally agree with you. Have you read a book called Who Moved My Teeth? What happened in that episode? What happened in that book? That rat didn't even know that the teeth are being moved away. The change has happened. And when the rat doesn't know the change has happened, it's going to die, right? Unless otherwise it adapts and knows how to go through that maze to find the keys again, it's going to die. So, being in awareness is very critical. So, I'm a very spiritual person, so I'll tell you one quick trick to be in awareness. Be a witness to whatever you do. Be a witness to whatever you do, you will be able to recognize the changes that are happening. If you are otherwise you become thick skinned. You will not even know that something is happening. And it will hit you very hard. Being in awareness, being knowing that things are happening, that you have to be aware. You have to be in the present, not in your own virtual metaverse. Not in your own world, without even knowing what the changes are happening. Right? So you have to be there. Attitude is everything. We always tell in how many of you in HR parlance they'll tell hire for will and train for skill. Hire for will and train for skill. Skill can be learned. But can I make you the strongest of the person by saying that comes from within, right? The attitude. Your strength comes from within. And you can develop it. You can develop it. All of our experiences develop it. All the things which we go through in life develops it. Today I am much stronger than what I was in my 20s because the experiences have taught me, right? So, but will is very important. The attitude is very important. Okay? Hurry, hurry to build our career, study. How many of us invest in relationships? How many of you talk to your childhood friend who used to help you a lot? Yay! I am so happy this group is different. Very, very good. I tell this, okay? And now I am earning a lot. I am very... And I am I am single as well, right? I do not want anybody. I am very independent. I am independent. What do you mean you are independent? When I die, no four people have to carry. Maybe I need six people to carry. Because I am very heavy. What do you mean independent? Useless. Don't tell that you are independent ever. We need help. My mom used to tell me, even the person who is the stranger walking on the road, treat him well because tomorrow you do not know what help you will need from them. Right? So this independence and I am by myself, I group, I built everything by myself, it's all nonsense. There are a lot of people who have helped you, knowingly or unknowingly, to get you where you are today. Be grateful. Build those relations. Build relations. I was talking to Himanshu and he was telling how here in India, from 5th standard he has been here and he never has a bank account here. Can you see? Friendships, relationships. I'm sure he's giving them the money, but he's taken care. He doesn't have to have a bank account for him to do that. Somebody else is doing it for him. Right? That is what it is. Relationships are important. Many of the time, especially when we go high in the career, when we become big, when we are small, people all have relationships, okay? They will all invest in relationships. But, when we go higher, when we have a lot of money, when we accomplish, 
Many of the times we forget to build and invest in relationships. It's very, very, very critical that we don't ignore that aspect. When I'm telling relationship, not just a partner. That anyway, because of hormonal order, you'll have much. Right? I'm talking about much beyond that. Much, much beyond. Be at service. Right? Be at service. What do I mean by that? Every time, we, we cannot be just thinking about ourselves. Mera ho gaya kaam, chalo. What do you do for others? What do you do for others is what you have got. You might be earning very less, but how are you making it impactful and how are you making a difference in the life of others? Being at service is going to get you fulfillment that no other job, no other role, no other position can get you. Being at service is going to give you the contentment that you cannot even dream of having anything else. So be at service all the, all the time. There are a lot of people who are underprivileged. It can be in any form. Just spending. See, somebody told, um, I think it was Ishan who told that somebody came for an interview. That person has gone through a lot in life, right? And she has come for an interview and she was not even a fit. He still went ahead and did that one and a half hours of interview because she thought, let her feel that she is being cared for, she has been getting interviewed and she is not rejected. She knew that she might not get the job. But what, what did Ishan do? Gave his time. Yes or no? So being at service is every small thing of this. You see somebody who is little down. How many of us do that? See, you don't look good today. What happened? Shall we go for a coffee? Imagine the impact if you have on that person. Do we do that? Do we do that? You see that somebody is little, uh, looking little down. Just spending that time. Then let's go for a walk. Spending that time, getting it out of that person. Right? How many of us do? Please, please, please. Continue that. And do more of it. Okay? Being at service. Okay. Be a lifelong learner. You remember that somebody who was that you told that even a, a, you have to learn. Somebody told you, you have to be a learner. Anybody can teach you. Ah, you told, right? Anybody can teach you. I'll tell you about how a dog taught me. Okay, myself and my friend, uh, we were going through a major change at work. Our, my, my job, my company, one part of my company was sold off. Okay? Overnight, the people who were my peers became my customers. They started demanding. Instead of treating me as an equal, you remember how the customer seller relationship is? It's different. Than your colleague. Overnight, from being a person who was asked for help, it became a demand. Somebody started demanding. There was a huge change. There were a lot of, even the company that it became part of, it was going through a chaos, there was a change of leadership, change of direction. It was a mess. It was a mess. Myself and my friend, I used to, I used to go to Electronic City all the way from Kandaspura. I do not know how many of you know Kandaspura is where Kandaspura is near, near Indrana. So I used, to, I used to go park my, it's very far. I used to go and park my car there in my friend's house and my friend used to drive me to electronic city. So when we used to come through this internal ring road, we were both very down that day. And we were talking, hey, kya hai yaar? Kya chal rahe? And then, there was, you know, we had to slow down um, in the Domalur. How many of you know Domalur inner ring road? That Dell office and all is there. So we were coming that side. And we saw this, we saw this small puppy. So what a small puppy. He is running on the payment, if, the, if you can call it so. So he's running on the payment. Then we saw him, right? He's running on the payment. And then we suddenly saw, like the payment in Bangalore, there was a huge train and the payment that cover no was opened up. And there was nothing for him to move on. He said, could be that. You cannot jump that. It was a big gap. Both of us were shocked. We can't realize. Right? Then he just stopped. That puppy stopped. He slowed down. There was a signal there. The police stopped stopping. So we stopped. So all the way. He cannot come to the road 
because their roads are the vehicles are on the road, so the, the dog cannot come on the road. So the traffic stop, this smart guy jumps on the road, runs before the traffic starts. His back, his back on the pavement. Both of us had a hearty laugh. We told him he'll survive, and they told our problem is not big. We will survive. That dog taught us that day that it's not going to be that difficult. Whatever we are facing is like that open train that has hit us. Now we cannot jump. We need to work around. Time will come. Look at that. Us then charge them. Stop them. Right? Our puppy taught us that lesson, and we were in our fifties. Learn from the puppy. So even a dog can, provided you are willing to observe. What did she tell? Provided you are willing to observe. Anything and everything can teach us. The nature teaches us so much. But are we ready to willing to observe and learn from it? Right? Be a lifelong learner. If you observe, if you listen, you will learn more. Don't ever stop learning. Right? Be a lifelong learner. Okay, this is my last lesson. This is the tenth lesson. Have fun, yeah. Don't take life too seriously. Okay, have fun. Life is to be enjoyed. Life is to be lived. Not be the complainer. Oh, yeah. No, live life joyfully. Okay. So this is my favorite uh, task. Right. Pain is inevitable. Suffering is optional. I walk and I fall down there and I get hurt. I have to go and put a damn, uh, put a bandage or whatever. Whatever is, I might have to take a massage or I might have to put a crepe bandage. Whatever. That is pain. I cannot get rid of pain. Pain is inevitable. We get hurt. Somebody broke up with us. Pain. We cannot get rid of it, right? Somebody broke the relationship. Somebody left you, right? Pain is inevitable. We will be hurt. No getting away from that. Pain is inevitable. But suffering is optional. Oh, you! Why did it happen with me only? Who kept the chair there? I had such a beautiful sari and now that is gone. Suffering, right? Pain is inevitable. Suffering is optional. Pain is what happened to you. Suffering is your response to you. Your response, not a pain's response. It's your response. That is something which you can control, right? That is something which is in your hand. Pain is inevitable. Suffering is optional. I didn't get a promotion on time. It happens with me only. See that person didn't do anything and they got a promotion. I struggled so hard and I didn't get a promotion. I worked hard. I didn't get a promotion. It's hard. That's it. That's the thing. But suffering is why you didn't happen. Why it happened to me only? Why did that person get a promotion? That person is useless, but still gets a promotion. The world is so bad. The system is so bad. That is suffering. I'm not telling that you will not be hurt if you don't get a promotion after doing all the hard work. We all get. That's me. But why is it that the suffering? Talking about it for another six months. That would have happened, and another one year. Some of us life long. Just that we did not know it. See, what happened? Right? You all understand, isn't it? No. Okay. So pain is inevitable. Suffering is optional. It is your response to the pain. Let it go. Forgive. Forget. Tell us sorry. Tell us thank you. Move on. Enjoy life. Just enjoy life. You know the fact that you are able to get up in the morning, come to the class. You are much blessed than most of the people who are suffering. What are we complaining about? What are we complaining about? Live life joyfully. Live life with lots of 